Let us come to God now in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Father God, were it not for Jesus, we would never understand, know or find you. We confess that the picture we have of you is blurred and out of focus. Too easily do we think of you as the kind of God who is quick to get angry or who is forever indulging us. And so this morning, we bring our praise to you as we remember how Jesus, by his life and death on the cross, has perfectly portrayed to us how holy and loving you are. Lord Jesus, as you revealed yourself to the first disciples so that they responded to you in worship, love and obedience, we pray that you will keep making yourself known to us, that we too might worship, love and follow you. We ask that you will correct our many false pictures of Father God, whose faithfulness is great, whose mercies are new every morning, and who will always provide for our many needs. Lord Jesus, in this somewhat different summer, we keep counting our many blessings and are so thankful for all that you've given us. We thank you afresh for home and family, for key workers, for our rulers, for modern communication and Sunday services continuing without a break. And so we pray, Holy Spirit, asking that as once again we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. For lo, Lord, you are the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. We bless your name, that you dwell also with those who are contrite and lowly in spirit. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Revelation chapter 1, verses 9 to 20. I, John, with you all the way in the trial and the kingdom and the passion of patience in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos because of God's word, the witness of Jesus. It was Sunday, and I was in the Spirit praying. I heard a loud voice behind me, trumpet clear and piercing. Write what you see into a book. Send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. I turned and saw the voice. I saw a gold menorah with seven branches, and in the centre the Son of Man, in a robe and gold breastplate, hair a blizzard of white, eyes pouring fire blaze, both feet furnace fired bronze, his voice a cataract, right hand holding the seven stars, his mouth a sharp biting sword, his face a perigee sun. I saw this and fainted dead at his feet. His right hand pulled me upright, his voice reassured me. Don't fear, I am first, I am last. I'm alive, I died, but I came to life, and my life is now forever. See these keys in my hand? They open and lock death's doors. They open and lock hell's gates. I write down everything you see, things that are, things about to be. The seven stars you saw in my right hand and the seven branch gold menorah. Do you want to know what's behind them? The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The menorah's seven branches are the seven churches. Good morning, boys and girls. Can you remember back to the month of May? We were very creative that month and we were doing lots of pictures based on the word hope and we made lighthouses and painted pictures of lighthouses, all really just to be uh, an encouragement for our church family in what were very strange and different days for all of us. We brought smiles to faces and we also produced pictures of God's love. We were reminded that our hope is in a God who never changes and who is secure and able to be trusted and who will guide and keep us out of danger. 
You know, there are so many pictures all around us. If only we would take the time to look up and see them. And through doing that, we would be reminded of God's love and strength and greatness and of what a wonderful creator God he is. Think of the the common garden bird with all its unique markings. Or what about the look and smell of a bright yellow rose? Or the wonder and beauty of a summer sunset? The view from a mountain top after a long walk? And even the rain as it falls and pleases our gardens? We can see the, the wonder of God in so many pictures around us. During lockdown, we loved to take a walk as our daily exercise in the forest. And I love being in amongst the trees. As usual, Mike liked to take us on a wee adventure off the beaten track. And one day, there in front of me, I was struck by this tree trunk. It just seemed to reach up forever and ever. It was so strong It had been there for many years and around it was clinging many little vines. I got a real picture that day and it just captivated me of God's love and of how he was holding on to me. The verse Isaiah 41 verse 13 really struck me. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. And then of Psalm 63, verse 8, My soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me. Now, the trunk of a tree provides the tree with its shape and support and it holds up the crown. And the trunk also transports water and nutrients from the soil. It has a very important job to do. And tree experts among you may well say, but Rosie, vines are not good for a tree trunk at all. But nevertheless, I got such a wonderful picture that day of how God was holding on to me as I clung on to him and with all my fears and worries at that time of lockdown I felt sure that God was holding me fast. I do hope that you can have an experience like that where you know God is speaking to you and showing you something of himself through a picture from the world around you. Sure, you know the rainbow, it's a picture that God sends in the sky after the rain. It reminds us that God's promises are true, that he will never leave us and that he is the one we should follow every day in our lives. Let's sing that lovely action song together. The rainbow's in the sky to show God's promises are true.